Luna and I exploded into the infirmary, nearly running into Alice Clover and Tenmyoji. Alice Clover and Tenmyoji, okay. Quark was there as well, of course, but he was just as we'd left him, asleep on the bed. What are you doing here? And he seemed to be the one that would, like, heal from things, remember? When he was a baby and he rolled out of a moving truck. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, I opened my mouth to retort, then thought better of it. If I really wanted people to start trusting each other, well... The real cha change starts at home. Wow. Did Sigma just grow up? As quickly as I could, I explained the second bomb and the memory card, how we'd come to the infirmary in hopes that we could discover the contents of the latter. Okay. Then stick it in already! Go ahead. <laughs> right. Just as Luna had said, there was a small slot under the screen exactly the right size to fit a memory card. Within moments, the screen was filled with what appeared to be random letters. Ooh, I don't like that. Ooh, what is this? Hmm. Hmm. Six rows, 22 letters each. It looks like the odd rows use one set of letters, and the even rows use another set. Oh yeah, I see it. In other words, the first two rows just repeat. Okay. Yeah. Didn't even notice that. I was just trying to do a word search. <laughs> Is this some kind of code or something? It doesn't look random to me. Is it like a DNA sequence shit? I think there might be a pattern. I just don't know what it is. Was there anything else on there? Mm. No, it doesn't look like it. So all we get is this gibberish? Mm. I feel like it's not gibberish. I'm just not seeing it yet. Hey Alice, you haven't said anything for a while. What's up? Does any of this look familiar to you, Clover? Um, what do you mean? Have you seen something like this before? Maybe during your training? Training? Uh, this is... So you do recognize it. Alright, knock it off, you two. How about you share it with the rest of the class? Alice sighed and stretched her neck from side to side. I believe this is an encoded message from a terrorist organization. Okay. Not what I was expecting. What? <laughs> they call themselves the Myrmidons. Okay. What are the Myrmidons? Put simply, they're a bunch of thugs who are trying to destroy or dismantle most of human civilization. So this thing we're looking at... You think it's theirs? Well, they have a number of different codes, but I do think this is one of them. Then the bomb? It was set by one of the Myrmidons, wasn't it? Myrmidons? Yes. Well, I can't say for sure, of course, but it seems likely. Okay. Uh, damn, I've got a ton of questions for you. But let me start with this one. What the heck does that thing say? It's actually a good question to start with. I don't know. Fuck. What? How am I supposed to decode it? You, well, you sounded like you knew what you were talking about. I don't have the key. Without a key, it would take literally hundreds of years to decode. Have we had anything that would be like a key before? I don't think so. What about you, Clover? Well, if Alice doesn't know how, I sure don't. But, see... Hmm. Not much we can do, then. 
We can come back to that code stuff later. I've got another question. Alice, Clover, who the hell are you? Why do you know about this code? That's... You told me your job was to eliminate enemies of the state or something like that. Just what the hell kind of job is that? I think it's time you told us what you do. <laughs> Everybody's waiting. Sorry, but I can't. Why not? Because you might be one of them. You might be the person who set the bomb. That's idiotic. Of course I'm not. Really? And where's your proof? For all I know, you're my enemy. I can't tell you anything. I'm not your enemy. I'm your ally. I'm your friend? Really? I just want all of us to get out of here. Just please tell us. Please. We need to find out who did this so we can all escape. But we have too little information. We need your help. Fine. If you won't tell us about yourself, then just tell us about the Mia Midons. What else do you know about them? I'm sorry. Before I could blink, she'd leapt up and run out of the room. Alice! <laughs> hey, wait, Alice! What are you doing? I took off after her. How long are you going to keep following me? Till you tell me what they are. <laughs> Until you tell me what you know. Then why don't you just ask Clover? Clover? You already know she works with me. Well, yeah. Then why don't you... I wanted to hear it from you. Why? That's a good question. Remember the crew quarters? Or this garden? We got paired up for two separate rounds. That means I've spent more time with you than anybody else here. Maybe that's it. I guess I'm just curious about you. What are you talking about? I'm not flirting with you, Alice. She spun around to hide it, but I caught a blush of red in her cheeks. We walked down the path to where it extended to the pond. Oh god, are we sitting on the bench? No. Oh, but there's that um, graveyard thing with the gravestone with a keyhole in it. I stayed silent. Alice sat down on the bench. We gazed at the smooth surface of the pond for several long minutes before she began to speak. You don't hate me? Yes. What? Why? I... I tried to kill you. You mean in the AB game? Yes. Yep. I was so scared. Who wouldn't be? Kidnapped and locked up, forced to play some sort of bizarre game. And then we found that bomb. I know I probably sounded calm, but as soon as we found that thing, all I wanted to do was run away from it as fast as I could. Things just went downhill from there. What do you mean? I remember hearing that Quark had collapsed and running to the infirmary with everyone else. When I got there, I realized I couldn't understand what anyone was saying. And everything looked... I don't know how to describe it. It was like watching a video on Fast Forward, only it was real. Then I started to feel like... It's hard to explain. I guess you could say I didn't feel like I was myself, and it only got worse. That was probably the Radical Six. Yes, I think so. I don't remember much after that. But when I woke up in the infirmary, suddenly all that fear was back. So I... All I could think about was getting out of this place as fast as I could. It never even crossed my mind that it could kill you. God help me, it, even if it had, I don't think I would have cared. 
Lucy. I'm horrible. You're horrible, Alice. <laughs> you hate me, don't you? Just do it. <laughs> do what? <laughs> what? Do what? Kill me. What? Get it over with. Why? Well, I'm not you, Alice. <laughs> what the hell, Alice? I'm not going to kill you. I don't even hate you. You're lying. I could have killed you. I would have killed you. You did kill me. Come on, calm down. No one's killing anyone. We have a common enemy that we need to unite against. A single tear rolled down Alice's cheek, then another and another, leaving shining lines across her face. When I reached out, I saw her tense just slightly. Slowly, I brushed my thumb across her cheek and off, taking her tears with it. Why are you doing this? You know, you kind of remind me of my father. That's who you were after, right? The people who killed your dad? Yes. Okay. Did they have anything to do with the... I've already forgotten how we say this. Myamidons? <laughs> Will you promise not to tell Clover that I cried? I'm gonna go straight to Clover and tell her that you cried. Ha, come on. If you keep your mouth shut. I'll tell you what you want to know. What kind of an agent are you? You won't tell me anything and then you'll only tell me because I saw you crying and you don't want me to tell that you were crying. About myself and about the Miradons. Miradons. Deal. Sure. <laughs> My lips are sealed. Really? <laughs> What crying? I don't remember any crying. Good. All right then. Alice took a deep breath and began. My father is Egyptian, but my mother is French. They met while my mother was in Egypt on vacation. They and married shortly thereafter. When I was three, we all moved to the US. My father was a scientist and his field was cloning. He was recruited by an American lab, which is why we moved. Both of my parents had used English around me from the time I was born, so I didn't have any problems adapting to life in the United States. By my ninth birthday, we'd been there for six years and that was when it happened. In the middle of the day, my mother showed up at school. Her eyes were red and puffy, but she didn't say anything to me on the drive home. When we arrived, there were several policemen there to meet us. My father had always been a very punctual man, and when dinner time came and we went with no sign of him, even I began to realise something terrible had happened. It wasn't until several years later that I finally learned the truth. My father's lab had been attacked by terrorists and he had been kidnapped. For the rest of my childhood, my mother raised me by herself. I didn't realise it then, but it must have been incredibly difficult for her as a single mother alone in a country where any relatives were a transatlantic flight away. She did her best not to let me see it, but every so often, when she thought she was alone, the mask would fall away and in every line of her face I could see exhaustion and loneliness. As much as I missed my father, it was those moments that made me wish more than anything that he'd never been taken. Fortunately, I was an excellent student and did especially well in math. I earned a full ride scholarship straight out of high school and spent the next several years studying. After graduation I took a job with the Department of Defence, hoping that they might have the resources to help me look for my father. I was immediately assigned to the Special Office of Internal Security. Their purpose is to investigate and sometimes deal with 
terrorist organizations and other serious threats to the state. I could tell I could tell my mother wasn't happy about my decision, but she chose to remain silent about it. Eventually I learned that the terrorist organization that had taken my father was none other than the Mia Middunds, although at the time that name didn't mean anything to me. They were suspected of human cloning. Specifically, it was thought that they had been using cloning techniques to copy their most useful members and expand their ranks. Wow. The Mia Demons, Mia Midons, apparently believed that they could use cloning to create a new race of humans. Now, at last, I knew the reason for my father's abduction. The commander of the Mia Midons is a man named Lef. We know his name and his gender, but not his appearance or his age. The Myrmidons are closely associated with a cult known as Free the Soul. We believe that Free the Soul provides their funding. But trying to pin any kind of misdeeds on the cult leader, a man named Brother, is like trying to nail Jello to a wall. Brother is supposed to be a fairly is supposed to be fairly advanced in years, and rumors say that he's so old he can't even get out of bed. Unfortunately, his mind seems to be as sharp as ever. Okay, so this is a guy that's the leader of the cult that's funding these terrorists. Okay. At that point, I hit a wall. I knew the. Oh, I wish I remembered how you say this. Me and Madons had been behind my father's kidnapping. That was all I could learn about them. Then, one day, I got a tip that some of them were hiding in a building in the Nevada desert. I headed out immediately. On the way there, my car had some engine troubles and stalled out. I was trying to decide what to do when an SUV appeared out of nowhere. I'll give you one guess who was behind the steering wheel. Clover. That was the first time we met. There were four other people in the car with her and when I asked them what they were doing, I got what was just about the last answer I'd expected. They told me they'd been locked up inside of the very building that I'd been on my way to investigate and that they were currently in pursuit of the people who had kidnapped them in the first place. My priorities shifted very quickly. After a short discussion, I convinced them to allow me to come along. My hope was to find the people they were chasing, who I was certain were the Miamidons. In the end, however, we were unable to track them down. In fact, I still don't know where they might have gone. Don't... Right, okay, so hold on just for a second, because... Um... Isn't... 999 spoilers, um... Isn't... Wasn't that all resolved, kind of? Like, everyone that was involved was... Like, they weren't pursuing someone. They had him, right? Not sure. Anyway. Eventually, I took Clover and her companions to the SOIS headquarters. We decided that involving the police would only complicate things. After some questioning, it was determined that the people who had investigated this particular event were not connected to the Myrmidons. We did, however, discover that the mysterious disappearance and subsequent reappearance of several children nine years prior was connected to Free the Soul. Okay. There was also a sixth person in the SUV, although they weren't riding in it per se. <laughs> a middle-aged man who I'll just call H for now had been bound and placed in the trunk. According to the other four, he had been behind the disappearance of the children nine years earlier. 
we also learned that his pharmaceutical company, a major player on the world stage, was effectively controlled by Free the Soul. Okay, okay, okay. More specifically, I suppose, H was a member of Free the Soul and very committed to their cause. So why had he kidnapped all those children? Apparently it had been part of an experiment designed to test the ability of certain people to access what's called the morphogenetic field. I don't imagine you've ever heard of it before, so I'll try and give you a quick rundown. Simply put, these people can access a sort of field that allows their consciousness to resonate with the consciousness of certain other people. To be honest, it might be simpler to just call it tele telepathy. Telepathy. The SOIS had heard of this particular ability before and had actually used it in a number of investigations, so I wasn't surprised to learn of its existence. I was shocked, however, to learn that these experiments had been carried out by a member of Free the Soul. If that was the case, then Brother must have known about it. The thought of him discovering a way to control and harness that power was terrifying. It wasn't too long after the incident in Nevada that another tip about the Myrmidons crossed my desk. This time it claimed that the Myrmidons intended to launch a large scale biological terrorist attack. My bosses decided we needed more agents to deal with a threat of that magnitude and Clover was recruited. Because she'd been a test subject in H's experiment, we knew she had the ability to access the morphogenetic field and we wanted to put that ability to use. After several months of training, she was sent on her first mission. She would be tasked with the infiltration and investigation of a Myrmidon cloning lab. I was assigned to be her commanding officer. I hope that our investigation might also give me a lead on my father's whereabouts. At last, I had a chance to find out what had happened to him. I wouldn't let that chance pass me by. Perhaps that was what kept me from noticing the truth. The whole operation was a trap. The lab was fake and Clover was captured almost immediately. I got there as fast as I could but when I arrived the building was only an empty shell. All of the conspirator, conspir conspirators who had pretended to be researchers and the like had already fled. I searched frantically for Clover until at last in a basement room I found her. She had been tied to a chair, but on the floor next to her was another body. It was my father. Oh my god. He looked as if he'd just been dumped there, and when I got to him, his body was already cold. He was covered in dark, ugly bruises. It wasn't until later that I learned he had died from ruptured organs and internal bleeding. They had beaten him to death. As soon as Clover had been captured, a Myrmidon in a mask had come to visit her. He'd said that unless she wanted to end up like my father, she would leave them alone and tell her masters at the SOIS to do likewise. In retrospect, they must have known who I was and who my father was. Yep. That was why they killed him. Perhaps they thought they were sending a message to me. Or that once he was gone, I'd lose my reason for chasing them. They were very, very wrong. I took Clover with me and left. I tried to console myself with the fact that I had, at least, been able to save her. Sometime later, I received a call from the coroner. He told me that there was something I needed to see. There, in the morgue, was my father, cold and pale, on a steel table. I could barely stand to look at him, but the coroner insisted. On his arm were two rows of numbers, compromised of eights and nines. 
It took me a moment to recognize my father's handwriting. He had carved them into his own skin. On his chest was another message, but they were letters this time, not numbers. Not many, just enough to make a short sentence. I love you, Alice. I broke down crying right there in the morgue. They were the first tears I'd shed since the operation had started and there was no stopping them. There would be no forgiveness. Not for the monsters who'd put my father through this. They'd destroyed my family. I would make them pay even if I had to die to do it. That night I made a promise to myself. I would avenge my father. It didn't take long to figure out that the numbers he'd written were latitude and long longitude. They pointed to a chemical factory that had been disguised as an abandoned building. Further investigation revealed that it was the mother lord we'd been looking for, the headquarters of Myrmidons. Okay. Chemical factory disguised as an abandoned building. I think my father must have known how things would turn out. Knowing he was going to die, he'd written the directions to our enemy's fortress on his own body. He'd sacrificed too much for me to waste this opportunity with recklessness. This time, our operation would succeed. This time, I wouldn't let my excitement put Clover or any of my other agents in danger. So we took our time, we gathered information, we did our research and we planned. Finally, we were ready. December 25th, 2028 was going to be the day we finally set foot inside the Myrmidon stronghold. But then, on the 22nd, only three days before the operation was scheduled to begin, a man in a gas mask appeared. So you inhaled the gas, pass out, and walk up here in the AB room? Yes. That's a lot of information. Wow, so that's that's what happened between 999 and now. Uh, at least as far as Alice and Clover are concerned. I have no reason to believe that any of that is false. Um, I feel like there's some key kind of things there. So they got taken right before they were scheduled to do this whole thing. Like bust this terrorist organization. Well, there it is. Everything that's happened with the Myrmidons and me. Myrmidons. I think I was saying it right. So they already had this leak about a bio terrorist attack. And it seems like maybe they didn't bust them on the 25th like they were meant to. And then this biological attack has happened, right? On the outside. I left a few of the details out, of course, but you get the idea. Yeah. Thanks. She gave me a sad sort of smile and stood up. We should go back. Well, thank you for sharing, Alice. I will not tell anybody that you cried. <laughs> oh, not yet. Your story explained a lot, but there's still one big question. Which is? Who here is a Myrmidon? One of us planted the bombs. And based off the code we found, it's pretty clear that person is a Myrmidon. Right? Yes. Oh yeah, that's how we've linked it because of that memory card we got with that cord on, okay. And I agree that we need to figure out who they are. 
Maybe we shouldn't have left the memory card in the screen for everyone to see. So we can assume it's not Clover, it's not Alice. It's not us. It's kind of all we've got right now. What do you propose we do? Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Do you have any clues? Clues? Hmm. Well, if I could decrypt that code, it might tell us something, but... How can we do that? I told you. You need a key. We need a key. Without that, it's pointless. What's a key? A key is a key. <laughs> it allows you to sort of unlock a code. The Myrmidons usually use this huge string of numbers as a key. Wait. A long string of numbers? Could that be... Did we get something? Did we get something? To be continued. <gasps> Have we not got it yet? <gasps> Ooh, this is juicy. <laughs> oh, I'm enjoying this. Save. Yes, thank you. Where we at? Where we at? Here we go. All right, it's locked. What is the long string of numbers? Okay, so now we know what. So I can assume, right, that maybe there's going to be a long string of numbers. We still have one, two, three, four escape rooms. Four regular escape rooms to do in regular times, right? So we can assume that it's going to be in one of those safes as a clue, potentially. And then we also still have probably two more white door escape rooms but they didn't have any clues in the safe so I can assume that's how we're gonna um solve that so then I guess we would jump back into here um solve that figure out who it is and then that would unlock these locks right who planted the bomb oh that's exciting Okay, okay, okay. And what's this one again? Oh, five minutes to live. Five minutes of life. Oh, this is exciting. I adore this game. It's so crazy. Okay, we are now going back to Betray Tenmyoji. Uh, just as a quick little recap, we have um done what have we done we chose at the first door to go with tenmyoji we um did the infirmary and then we are just at the first ab game last time we allied and i'm pretty sure he betrayed us this time we're going to betray him kind of see what happens Ten seconds oh, so this is back when we're still paired with Fi. Let's be Trey. I don't even remember what advice Fi gave at this stage. Was this the time where she told us all of the pros and cons of both sides? <laughs> Alright. As Fi and I stepped out of the AB room, I could see the others running toward the projection, shoving and pushing to get closer. Tenmyoji was left behind, his footsteps a slow, heavy plod. What had happened to make him like that? Is this the timeline where we had found the dead body? I think it is. Yep, yep. I totally forgot once again about the dead body. Another really important mystery. The dead lady. Chose betray, huh? That's messed up. What? <laughs> what? You said I should. Hey, I didn't say that. I just asked you a question. What would happen to our BP if Ten Miyoji chose to betray us? It was a leading question. <laughs> Oh, I get it. 
<laughs> I was wondering why you were so happy to let me choose after you lost in rock, paper, scissors. You were planning to use me as a scapegoat all along. Was I? <laughs> God damn it. You was a... Screw you, Fi. Ziggy! Fino! Hey, what are you kids doing over there? We're about to announce the results. So I think in this section we might get some repeated stuff again. Anyway, we need to go have a look at the results first. Come on. Hey, wait. Shit. Good, good, good. <laughs> Looks like you're all here. Finally. Let's get ready to rock! If everybody would please direct their eyes to this monitor. It's been a while since we've seen Zero the Third. <laughs> yeah, and this is the first one, okay. <laughs> okay, so... Kay and Clover betrayed Luna. Yep. Kay and Clover always betray, I'm pretty sure. Poor Luna <laughs> on her own ally. Oops. Um, Dio and Quark betrayed Alice. Okay, makes sense. And Tenmyoji allied when we betrayed. Okay, that's fine. We look like Here dicks. Here are the results from your game. Now, let us check the numbers on our bracelets. I got betrayed? He chose? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, I thought that I was blaming fire and I was like, he chose. <laughs> Ally? Why? He chose betray last time. Last time? What are you talking about? Oh, uh, nothing. The truth was I didn't know why I'd said that earlier. The words had just appeared in my mouth before I knew I was saying them. Oh, you're the one who chose betray. I should be asking you why. I told him you might choose betray. <laughs> Fi, you... I can't believe you. I'd never choose Betray. I trusted you two. I'd never choose Betray. Are you shitting me, Tenmyoji? Are you shitting me? Shut up, Tenmyoji. And this is what I got. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> Fi, you don't need to apologize. I was the one who did it. I pushed the button. Oh. Yeah, I guess you've got a point. <laughs> huh? Wait, what? It's Sigma's fault. <laughs> you want to blame someone, blame him. <laughs> what the hell, Fi? Ah. What, you gonna fight each other now? I don't care which one of you pushed the button. I'm never trusting either of you again. Uh-oh. This isn't over. Just you wait. Uh-oh. Even when he did trust us, he still screwed us. Um, I tried to think of something to say, but before I could come up with the right words, he was gone. I spun around. Fi. What the f- But she was gone too. Gah, what the hell? No, where the hell? <laughs> How would she just disappear like that? As I looked around the room for Fi, I noticed that Clover, K and Luna seemed to be having some kind of an argument as well. I moved closer and did my best to listen so surreptitiously. I don't know what that means. Why did you do it? Sorry. I guess I wanted to get out of here as soon as possible, you know? Don't we all, Clover? I apologize, but I felt the same way. But... 
If we all choose ally, then we could all escape together. It only takes three turns to get six points. That would be enough to get us out. Why? Well, of course we know that. But if we betray, then it's faster. <laughs> we leave people behind to die. If your opponent chooses ally and you choose betray, then you gain three points. Do that twice and you get six points. You see? If you ally, then you have to play the AB game three times. Yeah, but then at least we all get out. And if you betray somebody, you only have to do it twice. <laughs> that's all right then. Why are you acting like that's the right thing to do? I almost feel like you're blaming me or something. And you're also gonna fucking kill someone in the process. We aren't trying to blame you. But, I mean, if you just think about it, wouldn't it make sense to choose Betray? No, because then if everybody did it, nobody would ever get any points. Forget it. I understand now. Uh-oh. It was silly of me to trust you guys. Luna gonna ha start having some opinions. Luna walked off with her head buried between her shoulders. Her back trembled as if perhaps she were crying, but I couldn't see her face. Alice, Dion and Quark, however, seem to be having some issues of their own. I want to see this. Hmm. Fine. You just wait. Man, this is all your fault, Quark. <gasps> My fault? Why are you blaming me? They exchanged dark looks, then stomped off in different directions. Dio is shameless. Zero, when does the next round start? What makes you think we'll be having another round? Well, you said round one. If there's a round one, then there's likely a round two. Alice is like desperate to be Trey right now. Besides. Didn't you say the goal of the AB game was to get 9 BP? That's impossible without- Alright, we're skipping. If I had to guess, I'd say it's going to be Tanbioldi. Or, or alas! Oh yeah, these are the people with like the least points. Or maybe everyone? What? Why? Yeah. Why am I going to die? Hmm. I guess I can tell you why. Anyway. Uh, Here we go. Oh. I see. Alice, Luna, and I only have one BP. That means we'd have less than zero if we lost two points. Oh, I guess because they've got the least, they're gonna choose who goes with who on the next game, and that's why we don't have another branch. What? What the hell? This is important stuff. Why didn't you tell us about this earlier? I'm sorry. Sorry's not going to cut it. I thought you were supposed to tell us the rules, not hide them. Well... Is there anything else you've conveniently left out? It's not fair to make people play a game without explaining all the rules. I think it's fair. After all, it's not like anybody else knew. Okay, we skip in again. I guess we'll come back to some sort of argument going on. Oh, yeah, okay, so it's time to go around and speak to everybody again, I guess. Uh, oh, maybe Tenmyoji will be in the infirmary. I'm sure he wants to speak to us. Sigma. <laughs> what do you want? Hi. What do I want? What do you think I'm here to play doctor? Only if you... Only if you're see Wait, what? Oh, fuck. <laughs> what do I want? What, you think I'm here to play doctor? Only if you're secretly Clover. 
Tell you what, how about I'll be the doctor? You get on the exam table and I'll cut you open with that scalpel over there. <laughs> Man, are you still pissed? What the hell do you think? My BP's down to one thanks to you. Come on, I already told you I was sorry. Sorry's not good enough, Sigma, to be fair. Remember how pissed we were? Yes, and that makes it all better, you goddamn idiot. <laughs> well then, what the heck am I supposed to do? Piss off. Yep. <laughs> Seems like I'm already doing that. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. Just get out of my sight. Easy solution then. Just, oh, Sigma, shut up. Just close your eyes. Leave before I make yours black. The last guy I fought went home in an ambulance. Shouldn't have picked a fight with a paramedic then. <laughs> Sigma leave. <laughs> Fine. I shoved my hands in my pockets and looked around the room. <laughs> That's funny. Uh... So, is it just you here? On this side of the divider, yeah. This side? Oh yeah, we've had Mark's this. Like I'm gonna tell that to someone who betrayed me. Oh yeah, is this this the dead bodies in there, right? Clark's just like playing around in there. I don't remember what we asked him, but obviously we got a different answer last time. All right, fine. I'll just ask Quark. Quark. Hey, stop it, Quark! Don't tell him a damn thing. Whoa, you're getting more suspicious by the. I'd started toward the partition as I spoke. Oh yeah, with the intention of finding Quark. I found him as I rounded the divider, but... That's right. Alright, okay, okay, so... That kind of went as well as could be expected. <laughs> uh, we'll do the lounge next. Oh yeah, something to do with an eclipse or something? Oh god, so much has happened. Oh, that was all exactly the same, alright? Crew quarters. Okay, this is all exactly the same. Quark's flipping out. Injection to the knee. Always needed when flipping out. Okay, and we're gonna. Oh, okay. So, how are we gonna do this? We don't get a choice this time. I won't go with Sigma. <laughs> yep. He betrayed me last time. Sorry. So, whoever's left. What about Phi? You hit the button, right, Sigma? <laughs> Well, yes, but I don't want to go with Dio. Same reason. Yeah, fair. I can't trust that he won't betray me again. Uh, thanks a lot, Quark. You've single-handedly torpedoed my reputation. Well, that leaves us with option B. Of course, it was Quark's fault. Nothing to do with you. You're a charmer. No. Option B. Option B. We already did this one, right? Why not? Sorry, Luna, but I can't trust you or Fi either. Why not? The way he is right now, someone's going to have to carry Quark. I just can't afford to give him to someone I don't trust. Oh, we've made Tenmyoji very untrusting then, I guess. I thought you trusted Fi. Not enough for this. Then what do you intend to do? Why would he trust Fi? Wasn't Fi in the room with us? 
clock shifted silently in Kea's arms. Quark is a solo, as are you, Tenmyoji. Solos can't pair with one another. You do remember that. Yeah, of course I do. I didn't say there wasn't anyone I trusted. There's one person. Who do you trust then? Clover. Okay. W what? Me? Yeah, that's what I said. Why? I can't tell you. So she doesn't know why he trusts her. I just know that you'll keep him safe. Um, well, that's nice of you to say, but... But he knows her. My partner is Sigma. Are you sure you want me to take him? It's fine. Clover, you just vote by yourself. Okay. Make Sigma wait outside the AV room. But didn't Clover... Clover's the one that told us to betray him the other time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, okay. Okay, so... Yeah, but that doesn't make sense. He doesn't trust us to go with us. But he trusts us with Quark, the only thing he probably loves more than himself. No. If Clover takes Quark, then we have to go with option C, right? That means I'll be stuck with Dio. Oh yeah, but this is the option. This is, yeah, this is the one we haven't done. But There's no way in hell I'm going to let that happen. You have to. Who do you want to pair up with then? Isn't it obvious? Quark. Remember what the announcement said? Something about how the system will automatically vote ally for anyone who doesn't enter their own vote in time? If Quark doesn't wake up by then. No. This is exactly why I can't trust any of you. One minute remains until chromatic doors close. We don't have time to argue this. Let's take a vote. Those opposed to C? Alice and Dio's hand went up. What? Why don't you want C, Dio? Well, if she's got that much of a hate on for me, that hardly plays into my hands, does it? Mm. Wow, a hate on. Fine, whatever. I assume anyone who didn't raise their hand is all right with option C then? They're outnumbered. No one objected. I kept my mouth shut too. Just as Alice had said, there was an excellent chance that Quark would default to ally. If that happened, he'd make a great opponent. I'd choose ally, of course, but it wouldn't but it would be good not to have to worry about him choosing betray. Except, you know, that time when we thought the same thing about Alice and she still managed to raise from the dead and betray us just because she could. All right. 6 to 2 in favor. Wait. What about me? Stay here if you don't like it. <laughs> I imagine your partner might have something to say about that, though. Kay handed Quark to me gently, then crossed his arms and turned to face Alice. Her jaw clenched as she stared up at him, and I could see the gears turning inside her head. Fine. Ten seconds remain. Until chromatic doors close. Hurry, Clover. The door's closing. Right. Hey, take care of Quark. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I got a good grip on Quark, nodded to Tenmyoji, and took off for the door. Our feet slapped against the metal floor as we ran. The empty voice of the announcer echoed in my ears. Two, one, zero. Chromatic doors closing. Okay. Escape room time then. Which one are we getting? Huh. Is this a dead end? Oh no, this whole conversation again. Well, there are three doors here. 
But it looks like they're all locked. Hmm. Maybe we pull this lever. What's this thing? It's got a lever on it. Can you pull the lever? Come on. My hands are kind of full right now. Oh, yeah. I can take Quark then. You really don't want to touch that thing, do you? Well, I mean, look at it. It looks suspicious. Like I'm gonna touch it and whoosh, a bunch of poison needles fly out of the wall. Oh, wow. Maybe if I had, like, a piece of wood to move it with or something. <laughs> I think you might be a little paranoid. Then you do it. Fine. I shifted Quark over to one shoulder and flipped the switch with my free hand. Treatment center. Treatment center. See, no needles. Everything's fine. For now, only one of the doors opened. Did you see the plaque on that door before it opened? I think it... <gasps> this is the one with the freezing pods, right? I think it said something like treatment center. Do you think that's some kind of medical thing? First an infirmary, now this. Why do I keep ending up in these places? I glanced over at Quark, asleep on my shoulder. Hey. You know what? We may have looked out. Huh? What do you mean? Well, if this is where they treat people, maybe they've got something that can cure Quark. Oh. Yeah. Let's head on in then. Okay. 